Hello Divination and welcome. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to download a free timeline section made with Divi's transform options. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so before we begin, if you prefer to just download this timeline uh, section, you can go to this post, which I'll link to in the video description below. So all you have to do is to click the link and then this will take you to, the, to this page. Scroll down until you get to this area here. So normally there'll be an opt-in box where you just enter your email address. And then once you've entered your email address, you'll get this button here, which says download the files. And then you can just click here and this will download the files for this section timeline. All right, so I've gone ahead and downloaded it anyway, so you can just install it easily by adding it as a layout. All right, so what we're going to do now is to build this step-by-step. -step. So what we're gonna do is to start by creating a brand new page. So I'm gonna come over here, click on Add New. We're going to give our page a name, so I'm just gonna call this Free Timeline Section Made with DV's Transform Options. Click on Use DV Builder. So this is going to be built from scratch. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on start building. So the first thing we're gonna do here is to add some padding. So I'm just gonna close this and go into our section settings. Next, I'm gonna click here on design spacing. So on the top here, we're going to give this 12 VW. And on the bottom, we're gonna give this zero VW. And make sure you have to go in and type the VW because if you just put a zero, it defaults to pixels. Now it's time to add our row, so I'm gonna save. Click this plus button here to add our row. And this row is gonna have a single column, so I'm gonna go ahead and select this. So we're not adding any modules yet, so I'm just gonna close that and go into the row settings. So in here, we just need to make some uh, adjustments to our gutter and our width. So I'm gonna click here on design sizing. Use gutter width, we're gonna select yes, and we're gonna set this to one. And then over here for our width, we're gonna set this to 100%. So I'm gonna drag the slider all the way to 100%. And the max width as well needs to be changed to 100%. Next, we're gonna come over here to the advanced tab. So what we wanna do here is to make sure that uh, this design is only visible on the desktop. So to achieve that, we wanna click here on visibility and make sure you disable on phone and tablet. So now we need to add our module. So I'm gonna save this and then we're gonna come over here, click this plus button and I'm going to search for my image module and select it. Right, so over here, I'm just gonna click and search for my image that I'm gonna use, and this is the image. And the other way of, of uh, getting this image is to download that layout, and once you install that layout on your page, this will add the image to the image library. So I'm gonna select here on my image, click upload an image. So you can see here it has been added. Next, I'm gonna come over here to design, click on sizing, and here we wanna make sure that it covers the whole width, so we're gonna click on force full width. So that's pretty much done, I'm gonna save this. Now the next stage is to add another row. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button to add my rows, and we're going to need four columns. So I'm gonna click here on my four columns, and again, we need to adjust our gutter width and our width, so I'm gonna click here on this gear icon into my row settings, click on design, Sizing, we're gonna make sure that our gutter width is set to one, like that. So what the gutter width does is it reduces the uh, space between your columns. So by setting it to gutter, uh, to gutter width one, it means there's no spaces between these columns. But right now it's difficult to see because there's nothing here in these columns. But when we add uh, some content in there, you will see the difference. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is to go to our width and make sure we set it to 100% as we did before. And then over here for the max width, again, we're gonna set this to 100%. Right, so now we need to adjust our padding. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down here to spacing. So we're going to start with padding on the desktop. So here we're gonna set this to zero, both to the top and the bottom. And then we want to go into our devices here, click on tablet, and here we're going to set this to 15 for the top and the bottom. And this needs to be 15 VW, by the way. All right, so I'm gonna add, uh, activate my chain. So now that value has been applied to the top and the bottom, and we're gonna do the same for the mobile phone as well. Set this to 15 VW, activate my chain, 
So that's all looking good. So we're gonna save. Now it's time to add all our modules. So I'm gonna start here with the first column, click this plus button. And the module that we're going to add here is a blurb. So I'm gonna search for it and select it. Right, so this is where, you know, if you wanna leave this dummy text, you can leave this as it is, but I'm just gonna use lorem text. So I'm just gonna add a title as well. Next, we're gonna set an icon because right now by default, we have this image, but we need to have an icon. So I'm gonna click on use icon and I'm going to choose the icon I'm gonna use and I'm just gonna go with this little shape right here. Next, we're gonna add a gradient background to our design. So I'm gonna click here on background and then we're just gonna add our two colors for our gradient. So I'm gonna come over here on the second tab and click this plus button. Right, so for the first color, I'm just gonna paste it in here like that. And by the way, if you wanna use the exact same colors as I am using, I will leave a link to the post in the uh, video description below. Right, so my next color here is going to be white. So I'm just gonna click here on this area here and choose white. And then I also need to adjust my start and end position. So here I'm gonna set this to 40% and end position to 40% as well. Now it's time to um, go to the design tab. So the first thing we're gonna do here is to add our icon color. So I'm gonna set this to white and icon placement here, make sure it's set to top and use icon font size. This is where you can come in and adjust uh, this, the size of this icon. So we're going to activate this, choose yes. And we are going to set this to 5VW for the desktop. Next, I'm gonna click here on my uh, little icon and this allows me to go in and edit my mobile uh, devices. So I'm gonna click here on tablet and on the tablet, we're gonna set this to 17VW. And finally, for the phone, we're gonna set this to 18VW. Now let's go to the text settings. So here we're going to, instead of using the default uh, text here, we're going to change this to a specific one and we're going to go with, in fact, let me go to my body text here. So right now you can see it's set to default. So we want a font called Didact Gothic. Right, so I'm gonna search for it and here it is, I'm gonna select it. So now I'm gonna go to my title font. So again, this one needs to be Didact Gothic and I'm gonna make it bold. So I'm gonna click here on this drop down, set this to, go, to bold and on the text alignment, we're gonna center it and now let's add our sizes. So the title text size is going to be 1VW and I'm just gonna go into my mobile uh, options here. So for the tablet, we're gonna set this to 2.7. Okay, there we go. So, and for the phone, we're gonna set this to 4VW. Finally, we're gonna come over here to our line height and we're gonna set this to 2.8. Right, so for our body text here, we also need to go in and make sure that um, Everything is looking great. So I'm going to just switch back over here to my desktop. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just make sure that everything is all centered. So my body text size is going to be 0.7 VW. Now I need to set my sizes for the tablet and for the tablet, it's gonna be 1.5 VW. And for the phone, it's gonna be 2.1. And then finally, for the line height, we're gonna set this to 2 EM. Right, so for the next stage, we need to add some spacing, some margins, some padding onto our blurb. So I'm gonna come over here to spacing. So we are going to start with our left and right margins. Right, so next I'm gonna come over here to my padding and add two VW. And this needs to be applied both to the top and the bottom. And then left and right needs to be set to three VW. So next we're going to add a border. So I'm gonna come over here to border. And our border corners here are going to be set to 20 pixels. So notice that because the chain is activated, uh, my 20 pixels here on the rounded corners is going to be applied to all the sides. Now at the bottom here, we can't really see this um, because we don't have a color or a shadow. And this is what we're going to do in the next stage. So next we're going to add a box shadow. So I'm just gonna come over here, select my box shadow and we're going to go with this first option here. So now you can see my rounded corners now that I've added this shadow. All right, so uh, the intensity here is a bit too much, so we want to go to our box shadow blur strength right here and set this to 80% 
or 80 pixels. And then for our shadow color, I'm just going to come in here and make some adjustments to this. Right, so I'm going to paste my values between the brackets like that. So as you can see here, we've reduced the intensity of that shadow. Right, so the design of this is pretty much complete. I'm just going to go ahead and save. And then the next thing we're going to do now is to clone this four times. So there's a quick way to do this. I'm going to use my shortcut. So I'm going to hit Command C. That's because I'm on a Mac. But if you're on a PC, it's Control C. And then to paste, it's Command V. If you're on a PC, it's Control V. Right, so that's what I'm adding right now. So you can see I've just quickly added them there in place. So to differentiate these, all you have to do is to change the colors, uh, the gradient colors. So to do that, I'm just going to come over here, click this gear icon, and then I'm just going to scroll down here to background, and all I have to do is to change my first color. So I'm going to paste my color in here. Now, as I mentioned before, the colors I'm using throughout this uh, design can be found in the post, which I'll link to in the video description below. All right, so what you want to do is to go ahead and add the rest of the colors by just um, following the steps that I've just shown you in this example. All right, so I've added all my colors, so they all look different now. So here comes the fun stuff. This is where we're going to add our transform settings to complete our design. So we're going to start off with the first one here. I'm going to click on this gear icon, click on design, transform. So I'm going to come over here to my second tab, I'm going to set my value here, minus 6VW. And on the bottom here, we're going to set this to 2VW. Right, so notice that as I'm entering these values here, um, it's being applied both to this side and this side. So what you need to do is to click on this chain to break it so that we can add these values independently. So there we go. So now that I've added this, you can see that the positioning of this has shifted. So if I scroll up here, you'll notice that this is where my, now my module is. So next, I'm going to come over here to click on this little icon so I can adjust my tablet and phone uh, uh, settings. So here, in the tablet view, we just need to set this to zero and the bottom to zero as well. Come over here to the phone. This also needs to be set to zero, like that. Great. So what we need to do now is to continue with our design and add these transform settings to our next uh, module. So I'm going to save this one here, scroll down, go to my second one, click on this gear icon, design, transform, click on the second tab on the transform translate, break the chain. And the values that we need here are 16.6 VW. And then over here, we need to set this to minus 78. Okay, now let's just double check and make sure that this is in position. And, and as you can see, uh, this is right in position. Great. So what we also need to do here is to go into our tablet views and our phone views and make some adjustments here as well. So here we're going to set it to 0VW. And same here for the bottom. Come over here to the phone. And this is already set, so that's fine. Great. Now let's move on to our third one. So I'm going to save this. Scroll down over here, click on this gear icon, click on design, transform, click on the second tab. So here we need to start off by breaking this chain, set this to 17VW. And over here, we're going to set this to minus 46. Now let's just double check, make sure it's in position. And it is. Save that. And then go to our final one, click here on this gear icon, design, transform, Let's click on the second tab. And here we're going to add minus 66 to the bottom. And over here, we're going to set this to minus 24. Right, so now this is in position. So we're going to save this. And then we're going to come over here to our row settings and set some negative margins. So I'm going to click here on design, spacing. So for margin bottom here, we're going to set this to minus 15 VW. So pretty much this is our final design. I'm going to save this and then we're going to go through our design and take a look one more time. So I'm going to save the page, exit the visual builder. And this is our final design. 
So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.